Excellencies, Heads of State and Government and First Ladies, Excellencies, Heads of Delegation, Excellencies, former Heads of State and Government, Excellency Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Heads of International Organizations, leaders of Rwanda's highest institutions, members of the diplomatic corps, friends of Rwanda, Banyar Rwanda Mwes. What I have just said is that I can only believe, begin by thanking all Rwandans for putting their trust and confidence in me. It is an honor to serve as your president for another term. To all our guests, friends, and partners from near and far, your presence on this important day is very deeply meaningful and greatly appreciated. We are especially grateful to all the heads of state and the government who have joined us or sent representatives. Many of you have accompanied our country and our people throughout this 30-year journey of rebuilding. The electoral campaign was a period of joy and satisfaction for all of us. Millions attended rallies and almost everyone went to vote. But it isn't just about numbers. There is a, 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 a much deeper meaning behind what all of us saw and experienced. That reality is undeniable. It stems from the spirit of togetherness among Rwandans as well as a shared determination to be the owners of our future. This is exactly what we have been working for all of these years. Rather than leaving behind new divisions to be healed, our political process is designed to renew and deepen our unity. Over the past three decades, what Rwandans have managed to accomplish is even more than we expected. Indeed, it is beyond what adds, what words can describe given where we started from. Our tragic past 
ignited a fire in each one of us, the fire of hope, resilience, and justice. This is who we have become as Rwandans. In this year, 2024, the intersecting crises that define our region and our world continue to create uncertainty and distrust. As a result of an addressed inequalities and double standards. Peace in our region is a priority for Rwanda. Yet, it has been lacking particularly in Eastern DRC. But peace cannot be delivered by anyone from anywhere, no matter how powerful, if the party most directly concerned does not do what is needed. Without that, the sincere mediation efforts by the mandated regional leaders cannot work as intended. And here, I would like to pause to thank the President of Angola, President Lorenzo, who is here with us, and the President of Kenya, President William Ruto, among others, for everything they have done and continue to do. Peace cannot happen all on its own. We all have to do our part and the right things in order to achieve and sustain peace. This should not be seen as a favor to anyone. For anyone to do what is needed for everybody to have peace and have their rights, can't be a matter of favors being dished out to people. It's an obligation. In the end, when it doesn't happen, that's why people stand up and fight for it. It should be understood as a a necessity because it is a question of people's rights. And there cannot be real peace if those rights are not respected. You can't wake up one day and decide to deny whoever you want their citizenship right and expect to get away with it. There has to be a meeting in the middle. There has to be a compromise. 
This is a time to reflect on the kind of world we want our children to live in. As a global community, we have more in common than we think. And within us, we always have the tools to repair, to renew, and to reset. It does not mean that we have to agree on everything. But we must respect each other's choices, all of us, doing the best we can in our unique context. There is no longer room for the powerful to impose their vision about how others ought to live. or to create narratives that falsify the truth. This must always be resisted, even when under pressure. But there is also no possible excuse for injustice, wherever it occurs whether committed against us as Africans or inflicted by ourselves. Indeed, we Africans are people who have consistently fought injustice. We don't need any lessons about how best to do so. And we must all humbly acknowledge the necessity to adapt our political and governance systems to our specific conditions and the expectations of our citizens. Like everyone else, what matters most to us is to see our people living safe, healthy, and dignified lives. This is imperative, and it is a responsibility that we cannot evade or outsource. Since its establishment, the African Union, has been instrumental in the building on this common heritage to forge a more integrated future where the many voices of Africa can be heard. From security to health, infrastructure, and jobs for youth, we are taking responsibility for our challenges and offering solutions. That is the mindset that brings us closer together and creates positive change over time for everyone. Africa is home to some of the world's most ancient civilizations, but also to its most youthful population who are as capable as you would find anywhere else. Our youth are energetic, innovative, 
and bold, and they are not afraid to change the status quo for the better by demanding, by demanding more of ourselves and from each other. For the last 30 years, our country has been good work in progress. This new mandate means the beginning of even more hard work. that expectation to keep improving is not a dream, it is a, reali it is a reality. We can do it and we will do it. Above all, we will be together. And I thank you once again for renewing the privilege to serve our country. May God bless Rwanda, Africa, and all of us Africans.